My mic is uh, not on. I think it's on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, by way of title, um, my purpose will stand. My purpose will stand. And I want you to know that each and every one of you, God has given you a purpose. And that according to his word, your purpose will stand. And so I want to welcome you to the Lighthouse, Lighthouse Church and Marketplace Ministries. For those of you that do not know me, I'm Apostle Dr. Leon McCray. I'm the pastor here, senior pastor. Welcome Facebook and welcome YouTube. We thank God for you. And we thank God for people who have been tuning in all over the world. And we give God praise and thanks. So by way of title again, my purpose will stand. Your purpose will stand. And so today, obviously, I'm ministering on purpose. I like to talk about purpose because purpose means so very much. When you, when you understand the purpose in which you were created, there are some things that's going to happen in your life, particularly when you pursue that purpose. And, and, and what makes that even more important now, we're in a time, uh, what they call a pandemic, of uh, coronavirus. We're dealing with that situation. We've been dealing with that for the last several months. We're having economic and financial recession challenges that are going on. There's a lot of tension and unrest in the nation. And even um, in families, there, are, uh, there, there can be some tension going on. You know, uh, a lot of families, uh, you know, they're kind of restricted into a space. And, you know, I've heard things like, you know, the divorce rate is starting to go up. You know, people are getting separated. And, you know, people are spending more time with each other that have never spent that much time with each other. So it's, it can be a very challenging time uh, particularly if we lose focus. Mm -hmm. That being said, we got to be careful that we're not distracted from the purpose and that we have to endeavor, endeavor in this new normal because, you know, it's not going to be like it used to be. I hate to tell you, it's just not going to be like it's, it used to be. There's going to be a new normal. And how do you know we're going to have to create uh, the best new normal that we can, even in the midst of this chaotic situation that we find ourselves in. Amen. Somebody say, my purpose will stand. My purpose will stand. And the reason I wanted you to say that, because you have to understand, in the midst of a challenging or a chaotic situation, you have to know that you have a purpose. There's a purpose in you being here. Yes. Okay. That might be a purpose, and, and as uh, our sister Rosa said, you know, I've, uh, you know, I've instilled into my my, my children, I've I instilled into my, my nieces and my nephews uh, uh, the purposes of God and the purposes of family and those kind of things. So whatever that purpose is, you know, we have to fulfill the purpose because it's not just about us. It's about who we can influence. It's about who we can touch, who we can bring light to. You know, this, this place is called the Lighthouse, but it's only the Lighthouse if you allow your light to shine. Amen. How many know that we have an opportunity as we go out from the four walls of our house or the four walls of this church to be a light to someone, yeah. to be an influencer to someone? Because no matter what, no matter what you think, you, your life is influencing someone. It might be just to look at you. It might be, a, it's going to be an influence to someone. Yes. You know, I like my neighbors to say, you know, they, they, they said they looked out the window and seen my grandchildren, you know, going to church. And that, you know, maybe that has some influence, okay? But, you know, I, I'm glad to be able to do that because I was going to drive over and they said, well, let's walk, Papa. Let's walk over. So we walked over and, uh, you know, Little things like that can have an imprint on a child. Amen. They may remember that 20 years from now that they walk over to the church with Papa. Mm -hmm. Little things. Mm -hmm. Little things. Because I, I remember special moments like that when I was a kid. It, it, yeah. Some things just stick in your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. little things. So we, 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 you know, we can make a difference in someone's life. Amen? Amen. So if you have your Bibles, uh, if you could turn to Isaiah 46. And I won't be long today. Isaiah 46, 
Verse 9, it says, remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. Mm -hmm. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, uh -huh. and I will do all that I please. And I would have you underline that. My purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. God says that, hey, I've given you a purpose, and I'm going to do everything that I please to cause you to fulfill that purpose. Amen? Why? Because it's, it's bigger than you. Purpose is always bigger than you. So in other words, God is saying, hey, I've given you a purpose, even from the beginning of time, and he says, I will do whatever it takes, whatever it pleases to fulfill that purpose in you. God says his purpose will stand. And if his purpose will stand, that means that we're going to have to walk in the purposes that God has given us. Amen. We've got to do the thing to fulfill purpose. And so that also presupposes that we understand our purpose. And at this church, we, take, we teach a lot about vision and purpose. Yes. Why? Because, you know, if, if you, the Bible says if you don't have a vision, the people mm -hmm. perish. And you yeah. see people that are, all, that are operating outside of their purpose, they're, op they're operating outside of the vision in which God has for them, then they're operating in, uh, in dysfunction. They're operating on, at a confused level. Those are the people that are there that might be out riding, they might be out killing, they might be out doing this or doing that, but they're out, they're operating outside of their God-given purpose. Mm -hmm. So when we understand purpose, then we align those things that we do, we align that with purpose, then the blessings of God will follow that which we do. Yeah. Amen. Everything that we do. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to walk in purpose. All of God's works are known to him, and when it pleases God, he will make them known to you. But to his prophets, God says, that he reveals those things first to his prophets. Actually, in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing. I like that. God says, I will do nothing, but first I reveal the secrets, it's the secrets of God, to my servants of prophets first. You know, I, I like that. Uh, maybe that's why I, I, I married a prophet of God. I don't know. I didn't know all of that back then. But I'm telling you, when uh, there are prophets in the land today, and prophet just means that they are a spokesperson to, from, from, for, for God. God speaks to people just like he can speak to each and every one of us. Amen. And maybe it's a, 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 an impression, or maybe it comes as an idea, as a thought, but God gives us... He, he, he speaks to us all the time. God is always talking. God is always talking. So I'm always trying to listen. Lord, because your word says, he says, if you acknowledge me, yes, yes, yes. I will direct your path. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So no matter what we're doing, no matter what we find ourselves in, whatever situation it might be, uh, I find myself, and I would encourage you to do the same thing, just say, Lord, I'm acknowledging you, and your word says that you will direct my path because I'm acknowledging you. Therefore, I'm acknowledging you and I'm asking you for direction. And then you got to kind of listen. Because God will give you specific direction. I've told you many times, uh, you know, most of you know that I'm in real estate and those kind of things. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm driving down the street and I'm, I'm asking God to show me what he wants to show me. And, you know, those kind of things. And God would say, hey, I want you to look over here. And then, you know, sometimes I, I looked. And then there was this little bitty sign that said for sale. And I, you know, everybody passing all up and down that road. Nobody ever seen the sign. But God gave me an avenue. Why? Because I was looking. I was, uh, I, I was uh, paying attention to what he was saying, what he showed me. And I looked and I inquired. And God made a tremendous impact for blessing to me. Why? Because I was sensitive 
to him. And I'm telling you, it might not be about real estate. It could be about any area of your life. It might be about healing. Maybe uh, God is saying, hey, I want you to pay attention to that pain, okay? And I want you to do something with that. I, I want you to go to the doctor and somebody go to the doctor and, and find out that they caught something earlier. Why? Because they were sensitive to hear the voice of God. They were sensitive to pay attention to what he was saying. God well, says, if you acknowledge me, I direct your path. Amen. Maybe you're not convinced. Amen. But let me just say this. Yes. I remember a time when I seen this drop dead gorgeous woman. <laughs> and I looked at her and I slid across the pew. And I said, How does one get to know you? And that was it. It was history. But I was sensitive. <laughs> I was listening. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's begin this journey of defining purpose. What is purpose? <clears throat> purpose is the reason which something is done or why is it created. It's the purpose for, for something being created. It is uh, why does something exist? Mm -hmm. And so when we, we try to understand what is our purpose, then why were we created? Why do we exist? What are we supposed to do? There are some things that we are supposed to do. Yeah. There are some impacts we are supposed to make. First of all, if you've got children, how many of you got children? Mm -hmm. If you've got children, the first thing that you need to do, you need to raise them up in the admiration of the law. Mm -hmm. You want to raise them to be good citizens. You want to raise them to be good citizens. You want to raise them to be uh, respectful. You want to raise them to be uh, productive. You know, you want to do those kind of things. Why? Because you, they represent you. They're a reflection of you. And God, in his infinite wisdom, God raises us up as kingdom sons and kingdom daughters mm -hmm. to reflect who he is in the earth. Yeah. We are to bring light into who he is. And actually, that light if it bright, is bright enough, that light shines so bright and it will draw all men, women, boys, and girls unto him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes, it will. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I have not always been saved. Talk about it. You know, and as I look around the church, most of you all just was good. You was good all your life. I, I, I didn't have that <laughs> <no> testimony. <laughs> I, I just didn't have that testimony. <laughs> but somebody said, but God. But God. Thank God. You see, purpose begins with a word of God given to you and spoken over you, and many times those words are confirmed by the prophets of God. This now becomes the vision and purpose for your life and the framework or the frame of reference from which everything else is aligned and assessed against. You know, sometimes I look at my purpose and I look at what I'm going, I'm going through, and sometimes, you know, uh, it don't feel to go through a very challenging situation. You know, I'm going through a real challenging situation right now, and you may ask God why, but when you look at your purpose, and, and you look at what you're going through as it is aligned with purpose, and you have to say, Lord, you know, I don't understand it all, but you said if I acknowledge you, you direct my path, and even in the midst of this, I'm still going to align with the purposes of God, and I'm still going to move in that direction as I know how to move. So what I'm telling you, that everything that you go through, it doesn't mean that, you know, well, Satan is doing this and Satan is doing that. Well, God allows you to go through, through some things. Why? He allows you to go through some things to build character. He allows you to go through some things, you know, and, and I like what uh, 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 Brother Eric have, have been saying for the longest. He said, Pastor, this church should be full. Pastor, this church should be full. People need to hear what you got to say. They need to hear what you got to say. And I said, you know, hey, I, I'm, try, I'm doing everything that I can. You know, I'm inviting people. I'm doing this. You're inviting people. But all of a sudden, something happened that's so dramatic. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I ministered a word a couple weeks ago, and normally, you know, I, I got somewhere between 50 and 150 people that, uh, that, that look at the video, and all of a sudden now, uh, there are 30,000 people, over 30,000 people now that have, that have looked at the video that happened right here in this church. Amen. 
And people are calling all over the world. People are texting and emailing, asking for interviews on TV and radio, and people from Germany and Africa and Trinidad and all the 50 states. And, you know, I, it's just overwhelming at times. But God says he has a purpose. God has a purpose. And so we may be doing things to keep busy uh, and be productive or efficient, but if it's not in line with the purposes that God has given us, then we're all based. We have to make sure that the things that we are doing most productively, that they are aligned with the purpose that God has given us. The thing about understanding your purpose, when you understand your purpose, when you start moving away from purpose, mm -hmm. then you can self-correct and start moving uh, towards purpose and keep on moving. And as you move towards purpose, God, will, he will unveil and he will reveal more that you can still align to your purpose. Because therein lies the blessings of God. God says, I will bless you coming in, bless you going out. I will make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you above and not beneath. I will multiply and increase the things that you do. I will bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at, uh, man, my time is running. Look at... Uh, Genesis 17, verse, uh, verse 6, it says, And I will make thee, God says, I will make thee an exceeding fruitful. Talking to Abraham. Uh, verse, uh, Genesis 17, verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations, and for an everlasting covenant to God unto thee and unto thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. Now that was uh, the vision that God had gave, had given uh, Abraham mm -hmm. regarding his vision and purpose. So everything that um, from that point on, stuff that did not align with that, Abraham had a framework or a frame of work reference in which he could align the things that he do uh, was doing that that according to his purpose. And I'm telling you, God would do the same thing for us. Our vision and purpose is connected to Abraham's mm -hmm. vision and purpose. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And so the most effective way to develop a division and purpose statement to begin with is to begin with the end in mind. When we understand what we are called to do and what our purpose, then we can start figuring out the steps that, it need, we, that we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis to fulfill those purposes that are in our life. Mm -hmm. Understanding vision and purpose that God has called you will provide the framework that you can walk in confidence in whom you serve. Yes. Understanding your vision and purpose brings, it brings clarity. It brings direction from which your goals can be established. Our core purpose, as believers, our core purpose is Jesus Christ. He is the source and power and the energy to pursue our purpose. But how do you know that if we live long enough, there's, there's some distractions we can deal with? Yeah. You know, sometimes we can be a distraction to ourselves in the decisions that we make. <clears throat> you know, our job can be a distraction. Our business can be a distraction. Just being busy. You know, family can be a distraction. You know, our spouse, children, we can allow money to be a distraction. Our possessions to be a distraction. Friends, church, even church can be a distraction sometimes, depending on what God is telling you to do. You know, because we have to look at everything in light of the purpose and vision that God has called us to. Hallelujah. And, you know, I want to go here for a minute. I like studying the... the the life of King David. You know, King David uh, gave Solomon, um, before he died, he gave him some words 
uh, of encouragement. Mm -hmm. When King David was about to die, he gave his son Solomon the following advice. He said, be strong. Show yourself a man and observe what the Lord your God advises. Mm -hmm. What he requires. He says, walk in his ways and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and requirements, as written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. How many of you want to, everything you do, everywhere you go, you want it to prosper? Yes. You want to prosper in your health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to prosper in your marriage. Yes. You want to prosper in your schoolwork. You want to prosper in your relationship with your children. You want to prosper in your finances, in your wealth accumulation. You want to prosper in your home. You know, all of us want that, but God says that when you endeavor to keep my commandments, it's important because those things will keep you in line and will cause you to prosper in every area of life. You know, I like how um, Matthew Henry puts it. Matthew Henry says, to the sacred prophecy, he is God alone, for it is he only that <coughs> declares the end from the beginning. From the beginning of time, he declares the end of time, an end of all things. Enoch prophesied, behold, the Lord comes. From the beginning of a nation, he declares what the end of it will be. He told Israel, what shall befall them in the latter days? what their end should be, and which they were so wise as to consider. From the beginning of an event, he declares what the end of it will be. Known unto God are all his works, mm -hmm. and when he pleases, he makes them known. Further than prophecy guides us, it is impossible for us to find out the works that God makes from the beginning to the end. He declares from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Many scriptures prophesize which I delivered long ago are not yet accomplished, but the accomplishment of some in the meantime is the earnest of the accomplishment of the rest in due time. By this it appears that God, that it appears that he is God and none else. It is he and none besides that can say and make his word good. My counsel shall stand and all the power of hell and earth cannot control or disannul it, nor all their policies correct or countermand it. You know, I, I like that because it says, you know, God is so power, powerful, he's so big that when, when he's with you, even though all the forces of hell is against you, God can move all that away and cause what even the devil meant for evil, Amen. he can turn it around and cause it to work Amen. to your good. Amen. Amen. Even in a, a, in a bad situation, you know, that thing can just, uh, all of a sudden, you know, you're so stressed about it, but all of a sudden it's turned around. And it started working. And you say, Lord, you know, I can see your hand upon everything. And I thank you, and I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor. So what, what is God saying to you in all of this? And I'm going to close with this. What is God saying to you specifically in all this? He said that you possess your inheritance by hearing the voice of God. You possess your healing by hearing the voice of God. You possess your deliverance by hearing the voice of God. You possess success, salvation. You possess peace by hearing the voice of God. You overcome fear by hearing his voice. You know, you ever been in a tight spot but God gives you some direction. He gives you some item. Uh, he gives you some guidance. It can remove fear. You get witty ideas and inventions by hearing the voice of God. I am convinced that God is a God that gives you witty inventions, gives you ideas. He gives you things. And I think he gives it to believers first. But if we're not sensitive to hear his voice, then a Bill Gates or someone else will come along and pick up that idea and run with it. But if you are sensitive to, the, to that idea, he'll let you run with it. you got to believe that. I'm telling you, God wants to take care of his children first. You walk in the spirit by hearing the voice of God. You can't even participate in the rapture or be caught up without hearing the voice of God. And let me close with this thing. 
To do is to pursue. Make a decision this day to pursue your purpose. When God can trust you to pursue your God-given purpose, he will pour you out blessings that you won't have room enough to receive. It will be a blessing that will be shaken together, pressed down, and running over. When you pursue purpose, you put a demand on God's word, and he will surely watch over it to perform it. For his word will not return unto him more. When you pursue your purpose, you are at the center of God's will, and you are well positioned to advance the kingdom of God, and grace and mercy will follow you in all that you do. I like what the word says in Isaiah 46, 9. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. Yes. I say, my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. And I'm going to leave you with this statement. God wants you to fulfill your purpose, not just for you, but because of others that you are called to help fulfill their purpose. His prophetic word is declare my future, my purpose will stand. So God has, God has a, a, a purpose for you, and he wants you to fulfill the purpose of God. Because God says, my purpose in you will stand. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.